The news you want at the speed you need, this is Net7 News. And now, cartography points of interest. Eager Flats Aid Shelter is a shelter designed for emergency use located on Daymar under Crusader jurisdiction. This segment of Cartography Points of Interest is brought to you by Collegia Coffee from the Progen Traders of Nostran Vor. Java up with Collegia Coffee. According to library data, the shelter was named after the landscape of the same name. It was named after an eccentric artist who called it home. Norman Eager gained notoriety in the 2920s for constructing a series of art installations so massive and widespread that they could be seen by flying ships above the flats. There is no armistice zone out here on the flats and spotty comare coverage at best. Eager Flats falls under the Crusader Industries jurisdiction and is generally patrolled by Crusader Security and its subcontractors. Eager Flats is the first checkpoint on the famous racing route of the Daymar Rally held annually. Racers turn here to the larger leg of the dirtiest race in the verse. Portions of cartography points of interest are brought to you by Zappa Vehicle Parts. Do it yourself! The fighters you see on the ground here are part of a Skunk Works task force preparing to carry out a combat exercise. Unbeknownst to this reporter, Skunk Works were heading to Eager Flats to run a team v team event to test the composition sizes of our new task force org structure. The task forces aim to be around half a service worth of people with a mix of ground, fighter and large ship capabilities and we believe this will greatly improve our members experiences and have them see more of a share in the action. Not to mention making organised battles that much easier to run on a regular basis. While Packrat the reporter didn't know what was coming, we were forming up an ambitious dream station. My raccoon team was part of Task Force Alpha and Naptime was heading up Task Force Bravo, with Alpha using white arm armour and Bravo using red. The objective here is to capture and hold Eager Flats aid station on Daymar, and excitement among the skunks was high. You red armed bastards and your 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 <laughs> heretic red arm ways. Everybody knows that white arms are the only true arms. Is that Katie Byrne, the pretender to the throne of Bravosia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, may you may you have good luck out there on the field today, everybody. We'll we'll meet you in battle, but you know, may the best team win. I've got oh the my gosh, backpack. the paint scheme on this. <laughs> hey, it's we're going to a desert planet. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Pericles, if you go ahead and jump up front. But before anyone could do anything, we still needed the comrade over Daymar shut down. And Artax was on his way there right now. Oh, someone no get that mission. Through. Someone take the mission, yeah. So it's there. And make sure you sh share it with me so I can get out of here. Um, Artax is an experienced raccoon, and the array would soon be down, much to the surprise of Packrat down on the surface. Comps are down, Katie. Excellent. We'll Just go down? What happened to the uplink? I may have to record locally and turn in the remaining production, so bear with me, viewers. Now, we'd actually gotten a head start against Hospice Bravo due to a misunderstanding in communication. Basically, they had said they would go, and we assumed that meant they were heading out, but what they actually meant was they were ready to go. We planned on using the PTVs as drop pods, but with a potentially clear airspace, that may no longer be necessary. Yeah. Roger, understood. Do you see any, concert, any, any activity yet? We're like flying in, literally flying in from Shubin now. I see ravens arriving on site. I don't see any We did tell them that time it was yet. go, right? <laughs> we have an opportunity. They are miles behind. We've got how many kilometers we got left to go now? We are Range. at coming up to 30 kilometers. Okay. If when we get close enough, we hear reports from Echo that there is no, nothing in the sky, we'll just we'll just drop on foot. We'll just drop out the back on foot. Echo, we're, we're, yeah, we're coming close now. How is the airspace? Airspace is still clear. Okay. Get in here while you can. Roger, because the airspace is clear, we're probably just going to drop on foot instead of using the PTBs and just take up defensive positions. Sounds Roger. good. Okay. Copy. Get ready, guys. Five kilometers. Okay. Roger, Echo, we are dropping now. Echo's got a perimeter set up. Come. Mounting. Here we go. Here we go. We are down. Come. Everyone out. Everyone out. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers, I believe something is happening. We just had a landing, uh, 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 rather camouflaged. We've got troops on the ground. 
With Pericles, good work. All out, all out. Copy, okay. lifting off. Smooth. What's going on here? There's an insertion of troops. Please don't hit my ship. <sighs> that was very close. I almost got impacted. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got we've got one, two, three, four, five, six men on the ground. I don't know who these people are, but uh, I can't get close enough to identify them. Edgar is going uh, okay. southeast. That's it. Sniper Rock. Um, I'll text with me. My team with me. Roger that. We're in northeast. Up to the ridge here. We'd done a little planning beforehand to determine defensive positions with two of our number holed up inside the outpost. Raccoon Team Alpha was to hold a ridge to the northeast of the outpost, and Raccoon Team Bravo, led by Fingers, who we see here from Kythos' perspective, were heading to a sniper position to the southwest. But Task Force Bravo were prepping to make their entry, and unbeknownst to us, their planning was far, far more prepared. Plan from this point. Once we get the word that the other team is ready, we're going to be aligned to Crusader. Everyone will warp to Crusader individually and drop out of warp once Crusader is larger than their reticle. You want to drop out while you are in the Crusader planetary system. From there, you will turn right and warp immediately to Daymar. Once everyone has dropped out of warp from Daymar, your captain needs to report to command that you are in orbit around Daymar and ready and aligned to Eager Flats on the surface. And we're already late to the party. Fashionably late, though. Fashionably late. Is everyone in orbit around Daymar? Yeah. Roger, hold. Yep. In orbit. Redeemers, status, are you in orbit around Daymar? Okay, uh, Redeemers are, are in orbit. Redeemers are good. I'm just <coughs> trying to get there myself. All stations engage warp to Eager Flats aid shelter in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Warp. Dugan was doing an outstanding job of executing Naptime's plan, and the synchronization of Tosfos Bravo was just incredible. The battle was about to begin. We have hostile contacts in them. Uh, we go. Get stored then. Find yourself good position. They are guys. all over runny nose, including an A2 inbound. Fuck. Okay. The A2 inbound. Um, Ravens, how are you guys doing on deploying? Most of our people are there. Come. Okay, my guys, listen. Here's what you do. Contact one C2. Contact one A2. Contact Carrick Hurricane. Okay, Fusion, go ahead and get with uh, PFC Mills there. I think he's to your left. And uh, Grimbin, you've got the other one. What's his name? Despy. Task Force Bravo were bringing in an A2 along with ships like Durgan's Eclipse, but their A2 was also not empty. Yes, actually, yes, Go, go, go! Drop, drop! Out, out, out. It's an A2. Uh. It's dropping. It's dropping. Oh fuck! All right, let me get him. Oh, it's dropping us. Looks like a blister's out. Blister. Yep. It's hung up. No, nope, it's coming down. That may not survive. It will. Yeah, oh yeah, it'll survive. Oh my! An A2 carrier has just dropped a large vehicle. I think it is a Spartan or possibly a. We've got gunfire. We've got vehicle fire. There's a C2 behind us, Katie. Okay, I'm moving in to engage the ballista. I need to engage that fucking ballista. Oh, I, I see the Connie. Um, okay. yeah, I see the Connie. Oh, I'm right there. The ballista made it to the ground and would immediately begin maneuvering towards the outpost, seen here from the perspective of Mama JK. I think that's a ballista. Oh my goodness. There's lots of fire. We've got firepower. We've got fighters and we've got A2s on the ground. It looks like an entire engagement. Oh, the A2 just blew up. It's now our wreckage on the ground! If you could just cover, because I think it's going to move past me now. It may have already moved past me, I think. Oh, I got the ballista coming after me. Yep, see it. Fingers has eyes on. Engaging. Um, I Charlie, I can't move to the turrets. I think it broke. Looks like a vehicle versus vehicle engagement. Uh... Got 
Lots of countermeasures flying off. Yeah, okay, but this is fine. But this is gone. Charlie, you still alive? Okay. Keep an eye on the out 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 the ballista is still the ballista is still moving. The ballista is still moving. I just saw it explode. Unbeknownst to me, Task Force Bravo dropped a second ballista, seen here from the perspective of SB-57, and it too had moved up to the outpost to unload troops. And in the air, Task Force Bravo were also doing very well in this fight. Amy, what you doing, bud? Are we spinning? Why are we spinning? We're not, man. One redeemer down. I, I see ordnance flying. Uh, it's not pretty. I still see troops on the ground, though. We've got turrets active. Nope, I'm down. Okay. I'm down. Wait, who got you? Who got you? Uh, somebody came up from behind me. Uh, okay. Probably got out of the ballista. The ballista's turret was still moving. Dev Dev was leading Bravo's raccoons, and they wasted no time in pushing on the outpost. I see troops heading for the front door. I see movement towards the door. Something's coming That's in. Attack. See you. Are you wounded? Yeah, I'm dead. No, I'm dead. Dead. Come. Who's breaching? He's coming in. I see the first person hitting in the front door. I don't know who it is. Might be a claim. It looks like they're trying to occupy the this installation here at Eager Flats Aid Station, Aid Shelter. There's a second person. I don't know who this person is. I want to get closer, but I'm a little bit risky here. Yeah, I gotta swap my, I gotta swap my optic out. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing engagement. We've got large vessels. We've got small vessels. We've got ground vehicles. We've got grab bikes. We have ballista, heavy anti-aircraft. We've got some red entering in the vehicles. What's going on here? Is this a battle over Eager Flats? We've got a lot of small arms fire. The objective was to hold the outpost, so we had no choice but to try and breach in. Airlocks, though, always make for extremely dangerous assaults. Uh, do we breach? Yeah, I think we know. we'll need to move in. We'll need to retake control. Hi Thar. I got I got some at the door, I got some at the door. Okay, my Ash. team we all got me at Kaitar. the ballista. I'm pushing up the hill. I'm now on the east oh, side. Shit. I'm on fire. That's some hits. There's two inside now. Yeah, I just saw someone else enter. There's a lot of, there's a hell of a lot of smoke around here. Rick, okay, Rick. Can you make your way to me? That's uh, right behind you. Okay, excellent. Okay, we're gonna need to push up there and try and try and take this thing. Okay. I think it's I think it's their bikes that are uh, dusting the site. They have two bikes sitting yeah. outside. Look out! Look out! Watch the door! Watch the door! I do. Might want to put a fresh mag into this. Oh, airlock is cycling. Get ready. The airlock quickly reverse cycled. We didn't notice, but DevDev's plan was to cycle the airlock from their side as quickly as they could, so we'd have little or no time to prepare for firing. Control, he's just passed out. Okay. I'm cycling it. Ready? Let's move into the airlock. Okay, ready? Get ready. Spawning they... is being Remember. hugely delayed by Grim Hex's head. Ah, I'm down, I'm down. Dev situation. Dev's Dev plan had worked perfectly, and our initial assault had failed completely. Our task force were having some victories in the air, however, as we had the legendary Echo 109 among our fighter support. Oh, no, I'm down. You had Echo on you, dude. Yeah, I did. This hawk is bugging out. I just ejected sideways, that's gonna be fun. Make it down and survive. Oh, I'm dead. 
Eventually though, Task Force Bravo's air cover reached our Romanian raccoon team, forcing another entry attempt from Fingers and Kaithar. Where from? Cycling. Airlock. Oh, five Going. nights shooting. I'm covering the door. You ready? Kaitha, are you, uh... Come I'm gonna try to shoot right through the door with this electro sniper as soon as it opens. Yeah. Alright, Outcast, you wanna hit the door? I got picked up by a fighter. Arr. Down. Yeah, down. breaching's gonna be rough without it. Down, but not out, just incapacitated. I got two. Our Bravo Raccoon team had done very well to take down two of the defenders in the station, but now all our raccoons were off planet. And what's more, I had lost connection to the server, and due to Star Citizen's inability for orgs to reserve servers for events like this, I could not rejoin. It would be up to the rest of the task force to push on. Voltaic Gamer was a gunner on one of our redeemers overhead. Character reset, so. Oh shit. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm working through that at the moment. <laughs> so I just got like six outfits onto the station, but I didn't get to set my res respawn. So I'm going to flip around, land on the other side, outside the hospital, run in. and Okay. <laughs> otherwise, I'll be respawning on Orison, and that would not be good. No. Bernier is almost down. Just a bit of a hold up with Grimhax's clown tubes. Yeah, I'm waiting as well. We're taking fire by it from nails behind us. As night fell though, Taspers Bravo had pushed our side back to a ship battle far above the surface. Hostile Gladys is inbound above. 105. Missiles are coming in. Let's get on Reflect Man, Viral. Let's both get on Reflect Man. My remaining raccoons would reorg and insert again. Uh, we were at 15 kilometers. There's a few more targets popping in. Okay. Uh, any of them coming towards us? We have a cutlass. We also have a hurricane. We have been detected. Yep, I've okay, dropped. how far are we? We are at 10k coming into land. Okay, drop, drop, drop. Let's go. Yeah, yeah let's drop. go. Geronimo. Ravens mustering at OM2 underneath Yela. They had a lot of ground to cover, which after our recent Germantown experience is nothing we are new to, but by this time, Taskforce Bravo had truly secured the site. They, they have that whole facility lit up like a candle. Yeah, so trying to make a head, head first run at it is going to be suicide. Yep. So this is the jump a, town yeah. situation. Yeah, we need... Yeah, we need to just wait, look for snipers, uh, and just wait for air cover. The war game event had been a decisive win for Task Force Bravo, and I want to congratulate them on an outstanding planning and execution. It is our aim as an org to learn from these Team V Team events, and I am very impressed with the planning that time put into motion on this one. We certainly have some valuable lessons to learn. We also learned that lowering the task force number slightly might help with people being able to rejoin if they lose connection. It is unfortunate that loss of connection occurs commonly, and because orgs have no way to reserve server slots for these kind of events, it makes things very difficult if you push the numbers to maximum each side. If you lose connection and a random person joins your server, well, you have no way of rejoining your own event. Seeing as org v org events are kind of a really important aspect of Star Citizen, it would possibly be a good idea for CIG to create some kind of accommodation for server reservation. I want to thank all of the skunks that attended this event. It has been a difficult and uncertain time at the org with the structural changes we're going through, and you guys have made that process much, much easier to move forward with. And above all, I want to thank Packrat, who was on our server as an in-game journalist. Packrat had asked us if being overhead was okay beforehand, and I agreed, thinking it was just going to provide a bit of overhead footage. I never expected the amazing role-playing as an on-the-scene reporter, though. Just amazing. I want to thank all of you for watching, too, and send out a huge thank you to all of our patrons, who you can see on screen right now. 
And in this video, I would especially like to thank Cliff Mitchell, who recently became a supporter of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you, Cliff, for your very generous support. Patrons like you are what make these videos possible. We'll be back with more from Skunkworks very soon.